Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve swim in rising water. This is a graph problem. We're given an n by n grid, so it's going to be a square grid. Each position in the grid represents the elevation at that point. And so basically some amount of rain is falling at time t. The depth of the water everywhere is going to be t. But you're going to find that we actually don't need to worry about this t variable. We don't really need to worry about the water itself because we are allowed to swim at any position. So from one square to another square, if and only if the elevation of both the squares is less than or equal to t, t is the amount of time that's passed. And like I said, we're actually not gonna have to keep track of what t is, the reason being, let's keep reading the problem, we can swim an infinite distance in zero time. So, you know, if let's say, this was our, our 2D grid, right? One, 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 one. Uh, we could swim this entire distance in zero time. And the question they're asking is, if we start at the top left of the grid and we go to the bottom right of the grid, what is the least time it takes for us to reach the bottom right square? So clearly we want to know the time, but why did I say we don't actually have to keep track of this time? Because think about it. Initially, we're gonna be at time zero. So let's say the top left of our grid is zero. Then let's say the right and bottom are, are two, right? And then maybe the bottom right is also two. So this is our grid, right? We're starting here. We wanna to get to the bottom right. So both of the paths are pretty much the same to get there so my question to you is what is going to be the time it takes for us to get here well remember initially there's zero water and for us to be able to reach this position too we can only reach it if t is less than or equal to two because that's the maximum elevation that we've gone at so really what the question is asking is what's going to be the path from the top left to the bottom right such that the the maximum height along this path is minimized right because the bottleneck is going to be whatever the maximum height is because if the maximum height is let's say uh, four then no matter what we do we're gonna have to wait for time to be less than or equal to four so the question is what path can we take to minimize what the t is and then return that particular t value so in this first example, this is what the grid actually looks like. And you can see we have two paths, right? We can go like this, bottom right. And what's going to be the max elevation we reach along this path? It's going to be three, right? So then, therefore, the time we return has to be three. Or uh, if we go along this path, same thing, right? Even though this is a two, so for us to reach this position, to reach this two, we would have to wait for time to be less than or equal to two. But to reach this third position, no matter what, we're gonna have to wait for time to equal three. Now, of course, one idea you might have is just consider every single possible path and then take along each path what is the maximum height and then return the minimum of the maximum height from all those paths, right? And if we're gonna be going through every single path, it's gonna be exponential. But there's actually a trick, a greedy way we can solve this problem. And you might remember a greedy algorithm called Jixtra's algorithm. And we can do a modified version of this algorithm, which will give us a time complexity of n squared times log n. So let me show you that solution right now. So like I said, we're gonna be doing a modified version of Jixtra's algorithm. It's pretty much exactly like this algorithm, just a slight difference. And you might know that this algorithm requires a minimum heap. Now this, min it's a breadth first search. Jixtra's algorithm is basically a BFS search, a breadth first search, but instead of doing a regular queue, we're gonna be using a priority queue, AKA a heap. So we're gonna use a minimum heap, which is gonna contain the frontier of where we're at. So consider we start at the top left, What's our frontier gonna be? It's gonna be the adjacent positions, right? This position and the bottom position, which are gonna be in our frontier. So we're gonna take both of those and add them to our frontier. So we're really gonna add the coordinates of these positions. So think of the columns as being zero, one, two, and the rows also being zero, one, two. Remember, this is our target position. We wanna know from here, what's gonna be the path that we can take that's gonna get us here, such that the maximum height along this path is minimized. 
So why am I using a min heap? Why am I using Jixer's algorithm? Because remember, we're being greedy. What did I just say? We want to minimize the maximum height along the path that takes us to the result. So if we start here at zero, which one of these paths am I going to choose first? Would I choose the height of two or would I choose the height of one? Well, of course, we'd want the minimum height, right? Because it's possible with a height of one, we could also find another path that will take us to the result where the max height will still remain as being one, right? Whereas if we go down this path, we're basically guaranteeing, okay, the maximum height along the path to the result is going to be at minimum two. So of course we want to try the min path first. We want to try the smaller height first. So when we take a position like this and add it to our min heap, we're going to add three values. The first one is going to be the key for our minimum heap, which is going to be the height. So in this position, the height is one. So that's what we're going to add as the main key for this min heap, right? So when we pop a value from this min heap, we want to pop the one that had a minimum height. The other two values, of course, we're going to be adding are the row and column, which are basically the coordinates of this position. And I'm probably not going to write them out each time just to keep this code a little bit cleaner. So that's kind of the main idea. And each time we're going to be popping the minimum from our min heap, uh, you know, and then continuing on the frontier. So, you know, if we pop this value, then we're going to look at its neighbors, bottom and right. The other two neighbors are out of bounds or which have already been visited. We don't want to visit the same uh, position twice. So we're going to have a visit hash set for that. But I'm not going to draw that just to keep things a little bit more simple. And suppose we take two paths, you know, bottom right, and we get to this two position and we take another path, you know, top right and then go down and get to this position, this one position. Right. And remember, our goal is to find uh, to get to this this end point. Right. So from these two, which of these two would I say is going, going to be the path that leads to the result? Of course, I would want to favor this one by looking at it. Right. Because, OK, the height over here is one. The height over here is two. So that must mean that this path is going to be the path with a smaller max height. But that's not actually true. Take a look at this path. There's a three along this path, whereas the maximum height along this path uh, uh, it was a two, right? This two or this two. So of course, I would actually want this path to be the one that leads us to the result because the max height along that path is a two. So how can I do that? This is where we modify Jixter's algorithm. We don't really care about the edge weights in this algorithm. We're not finding the shortest path. We're finding the path with the smallest max height. So when I get to this position, when I get here, what I'm actually going to say is the value I'm going to put here, when I add this to the min heap, it's not going to be a one with the row and column. I'm actually going to add a three because I'm saying to get to this position in the first place, it took us a max height of three. So it's it's a bit disingenuous to say that this path only took a max height of one. So I'm not going to add a one in this position. I'm going to add a three. So each time we add a coordinate to the min heap, we want the maximum of its own height and the height that came before it. So with that being said, let's go through a really quick dry run. So initially we have zero uh, in our min heap. Let's pop it and then let's get its neighbor. So we have a two uh, below it and we have a one to the right. So let's add those. So we add one row column and we add two row column. So excuse me if this drawing gets a little bit messy, but so now once again, we're going to pop from the min heap. We're going to pop this one because it has a smaller uh, max height. So we're going to uh, pop it. We're going to add its two neighbors, right? Uh, right and bottom. And those two neighbors have a height of three and four respectively, right? So those are the max heights along each of those paths. So we add those four and that three to our min heap. And now we're going to pop again from the min heap. This time we're going to pop this two uh, because that's the minimum height right now. So we're going to pop this two. We're going to look at the bottom and the right. Now the right has already been visited, but the bottom has not been added to the min heap yet. So let's add that to the min heap. It has a height of one and you know, we'll add those coordinates, but I'm just writing row column just because to keep it a little bit cleaner. But actually, hold on a second. I added a one here. Was that the correct thing to do? Because the, the position that came before it was a two. It's disingenuous to say that this to reach this position only takes a height of one when in reality, 
reality, what came before it was a two. So what we're adding, what we're really adding to it is the maximum of itself, which is one, and the one that came before it, which is two. So the max of one and two is obviously gonna evaluate to two. So we're gonna add two and the row column to the heap. Now we're gonna pop again from the minimum heap, and this is gonna be the one that we pop. So we'll add its neighbors. It doesn't have a bottom neighbor. It doesn't have a left neighbor. The above neighbor has already been visited. The right neighbor hasn't been visited. So let's add that to the min heap. So again, we'll take the maximum of itself and what came before it. So basically the max of two and two. So two is gonna be what we add. And of course it's coordinates. Once again, we're gonna pop from the min heap pop this same one, this two, we'll add its neighbors. Uh, it only has one neighbor, this height of one, but that's actually gonna be a two because we know that you know the maximum height along this path itself was two. So we're gonna add a two row column. Now, once again, one last time, we're gonna pop from the min heap. We're gonna pop this value we pop it and before we continue, we're gonna see that, okay, it's, it's coordinates are the destination coordinates so we can return now. What are we gonna return? Well, what was the max height along this path? What was the max height along this path that uh, we had to do? Obviously a two in either of these positions, but are we actually gonna have to look through the entire path again? No, because when we added this to the min heap, we added it as a two and then we added its coordinates. So we can say that the max height to reach it was a two. This is the value that we're gonna return and then we're done. So. That's kind of the general picture of how this algorithm is gonna work. Coding it up is not too bad if you know Jixter's algorithm and you know how to use a minimum heap. So now let's dive into that code. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get the length of the grid. We know it's a square grid, so we can just uh, say that N is both of the dimensions. We are gonna have a visit hash set to make sure we don't visit the same coordinate twice. So let's do that. We're also gonna have a minimum heap. Remember, we're gonna initialize the minimum heap with values. The first value is gonna be the time. That's gonna be the key. That's gonna determine what we actually pop from the min heap. And then we're gonna add the coordinates. The time is basically also the max height. So you can call it time or the you know max height that it'll take. And initially we're gonna add the top left coordinate. So what are the what's the height of the top left coordinate? It's gonna be whatever is in that position in the grid and the coordinates themselves are gonna be zero, zero, that's the top left. And since we're adding this to the min heap, we can go ahead and actually add to visit uh, the position zero, zero, because we don't wanna have to visit that again. And last but not least, we're gonna need a little helper variable for us, directions, which are gonna tell us the four directions that we can travel in, zero, one, uh, you'll see where we're going to be using these in just a moment. It'll make the code a little bit cleaner for us. Mainly, that's why I'm doing it. So these are the four directions we can travel in. That's going to be useful for us when we're doing our BFS solution. So while our min heap is non-empty, that's when we're going to be popping, just like I showed in the drawing explanation. So we can say, in Python at least, the way we can pop from a min heap is going to be heap heap pop, And we're going to get three variables, right? The time or the max height it took us. Uh, and the row column. So those are gonna be the three things that we pop. Now, if we're also gonna take this and add it to visit uh, because this previously was not visited, so we can say that this coordinate has now been visited. Now, if this is the destination, so if row is n minus one and column is n minus one, that means we've reached the destination. So what we're gonna return is whatever the time or the max height it took us to get to this position. But if we're not returning it, that's when we're gonna actually start traversing the four neighbors. So we're gonna use the difference in R, the difference in column, the basically the directions in our directions variable that we defined. And using those, we're gonna compute the neighbor row and the neighbor column. We can say the neighbor row is just gonna be R plus DR. Neighbor column is just gonna be the column plus the difference in the column. Now it's possible that these could be out of bounds or this coordinate has already been visited. So let's check that. So if neighbor row is less than zero or neighbor column is less than zero or neighbor row is equal to n, meaning it's out of bounds, or neighbor column is equal to n, meaning it's also out of bounds, or this position has already been visited. So we can check that like this. So neighbor row, neighbor column in visit. 
So if any of these evaluate to true, then we're going to skip this position. Basically, we're going to continue to the next iteration of the loop. But if none of these do evaluate, then we want to mark this position as visit because we're about to add it to our min heap. So let's first add a uh, market as visit. And actually, I just noticed if we're going to be marking it as visit uh, right as we add it to the min heap, there's no need to mark something as visited after it's been popped from the min heap. So I'm going to delete that line up above. And so we're going to mark this as visit and then we're going to go ahead and add it to our, our min um, heap. So we're going to say heap q dot heap push to the min heap this uh, coordinate. So what are we adding as the coordinate? So of course, we're going to add the neighbor row and the neighbor column. But remember, what's the first variable we're adding? We're adding the max height that it took. So we're either going to say the maximum of itself or, or rather it's it's uh, previous position. So maximum of T and the maximum of whatever the height is at this particular position. So the height at neighbor row, neighbor column. So this will make sure that the value that we add here is always going to be the max height along the path that it took for us to reach this neighbor row and neighbor column position. And believe it or not, that is the entire code. We don't have to put a return statement on the outside because it's guaranteed that we can reach the target position. And once we do, we're automatically going to return whatever the max height was to reach that target position. So this is the entire code. You can see that it is very efficient. It's a very efficient solution. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.